The first week of your FTC robotics season is the most important week for your entire year. A strong start is what sets your foundation for a successful season, and a weak start is really challenging to recover from. In this video, I'm going to give your team the playbook for the week one of the Decode 2526 FTC season. I'm going to run you through what your team should be focusing on, what systems you should have in place, and what you need to have accomplished by the end of the week so that your team can be on schedule. Following along this plan to make sure that your team is organized, on track, and set up for success for the rest of the season. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've taught robotics and design for over a decade. I've mentored teams to national championship wins and multiple different Aspire awards. And this is the same process and plan that I use with my teams every year. This is now week one of the FTC decode season, and it's time to set up brainstorming. It's time to set up strategies. It's time to get a base understanding of how this game works before we move on. So let's take a look at our timeline here. The primary goal of the week is to have a unified strategy and brainstorming session. So all your sub teams together should be focusing on brainstorming. The first thing you need to do, of course, is analyze your game manual. You need to have a very clear understanding of how do you score points. That is your shining light the entire season. If I'm not scoring points doing this, is it worth my time? Keep your eye on the prize. Always go back to what is our defining point here? Is it going to get me more points? One of the things I want you to focus on right now is I don't think you should be building a robot the very first day. I think that is a, a poor plan. Uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And one of the best things you could do at the start of this week is read that manual and make sure you really understand the scoring criteria. Down below, I've got a video about a full breakdown on the scoring criteria that you can take a look at. You also need to understand that the ranking points has changed this year. So make sure you understand how do you get points in the qualifiers to be able to move on to the playoffs because that has changed a little bit this year. It's no longer a simple win-loss. I also have a video down below that describes how that goes through. Now, the first thing you should do, well, the second thing that you should do actually after you've read through the manual and you understand how you can points, you understand what's legal and what's illegal. And now with a better understanding of how to play the game, now we can start actually strategizing. This is where we go into the brainstorm phase. And I actually want to start by telling you a story about the Sky Crane. And this is the uh, Perseverance. There's also the Curiosity Rover from 2012 to 2021. The teams in uh, space engineering basically had to decide, how can I get a rover to the surface of Mars? They couldn't just drop it because it was just too heavy. And uh, they had to come up with a bunch of different ways. And eventually, someone came up with the idea, well, what if we just lowered this thing down on a rope. Uh, and that sounds like an absolutely absurd idea to lower down a Mars rover that's the size of several small SUVs together down on gigantic uh, nylon cord. But that's eventually what ended up happening. They called it the Sky Crane. And they have a secondary module that is floating in the sky on rockets and lowering the you know several hundred million dollar rover Actually, I'm not sure how much it was, but a very expensive rover down to the surface of Mars on a rope. I, I love this sentence here. Engineers referred to the time it takes to land on Mars as seven minutes of terror, making sure that this thing is lowered down over seven minutes so that it lands on the surface of Mars. That sounds like a really silly, stupid idea to drop things down a rope. But my favorite part of that story is that it actually worked. And this comes back to IDEO's rules for brainstorming. IDEO is... I believe it's the Stanford Design School, or part comes from the Stanford Model for Design School. Uh, you've heard me talk about design thinking a lot, but one of the big things about design thinking is once you understand the problem is ideation and brainstorming. Do not skip this part. In fact, my team, or actually my teams, we spend almost three full days just on ideation and how we can go about imp improving our current designs and different ways that we can do this. And IDEO has seven rules for when you're brainstorming. The first is that you defer judgment. In a brainstorming phase, you are not judging any ideas. There are no bad ideas. If you did stop the judge and some guy said, oh, let's throw this thing down on a rope, that's a stupid idea, let's not do it, they wouldn't rarely, or they probably wouldn't have landed a rover on top of Mars. Again, encourage those wild ideas. Really, really silly things is really important. And this may not be the fact that wild idea is taken, but what does happen is when once someone shares one wild idea, it sparks your brain to think of another way of doing something else. And uh, having more ideas gives you more jumping off points. 
building on the ideas of others, taking this from uh, improv comedy, yes, and. We don't just say, but this isn't going to work. And if we added this, and if we tried this, and if we modified it in this way, obviously staying on topic. One conversation is at a time is a big one. Staying focused on your point at time. Being visual is really important. You have to sketch out your ideas. If you're just drawing them down or just typing them down, it's not good enough. Simple sketches, stick man, topographic sketch is a big one. You don't have to draw isometric. Draw from the top view, draw from a side view, draw from a bottom view. Those are important ones for you to do. And then go for quantity. You should, for any 60-minute session, you should gen- try to generate 100 ideas. That is 100% on point. By the end of this and by the end of our brainstorming session with our team, we probably have four or 500 different ideas that it comes up across all your different members. In fact, I can show you some of my notes here that I've got in my brainstorming. This is from a 15-minute brainstorming session. I've got a few different ideas on this page, and then I keep going down on this page. Keep going down, I've got a few more ideas. I've got a few more different ways you could intake, throw things around on hood scoop. And I would say I'm probably at maybe a third of the amount of ideas that I should currently have for my role. This is not not even close to what I should have at the end of a brainstorming session. That was about 15 minutes, and I should be probably have at least another 30 or 40 ideas on top of what I currently have. Uh, quantity is so important inside of that brainstorming focus. Or after you've done that brainstorming, and maybe to jump off another brainstorming, is take a look at the starter robots. Go build a Rev, Studica, and Andy Mark all have starter robots that are a great point to take a look at and think, how could I change this? How might I adapt this? How might I improve upon this design? How might I change it? It's a good starting, jumping off point for you to be able to build up f- further past where they're at. Look at the materials, look at the ways that they are they're scoring, take a look at their full CAD models, take a look at their code. If you're a rookie team, you should definitely even just build one of these. Again, on the research point, I'm a big fan of the unofficial FRC Mechanism Encyclopedia. Uh, specifically for this game, you want to take a look at shooters. You want to take a look at indexers. So shooters will bring you down to a bottom page here. We can take a look at the small balls and we can open this up. It'll bring you a YouTube playlist of a whole bunch of different robots that have already done this in the past. Now, one thing to note is the FRC season 2017 used the exact same ball that the FTC decode uses. So you can take a look at past intakes, you can take a look at past shooters, how they set up this, and their designs are going to be excellent for building off of for the FTC season. Another one's good to look at is a lot of different robots have Robot in 30 Hours. Uh, The Fun Robotics Network has an awesome channel here on Robot in 30 Hours Decode where you can take a look at what other people have done. Take a look at what other teams are doing. As an old mentor told me, Steal from the best and invent the rest. Of course, you should give credit when things are are taken or stolen for your ideas, um, but there's no shame in building off of other people's ideas, uh, especially off of these server robots, provided you're giving credit. Once you've done your initial research and you've done some brainstorming, you've got several hundred ideas, it's time to go ahead and make a priority list. Uh, what I would do in this priority list is I would set it up and uh, you want to think within my team's means, what is the base level way that I can get scoring? And one of the most important things you do, if your robot can't move, you can't score. So you have to have a drivetrain. Build a drivetrain, get started from there. If you're a rookie team, in fact, I'd suggest you just take a starter kit from whatever build session you have, be it GoBuilda, be it Rev, be it Studica, be it Andymark, and you should build their starter robot. Uh, It's a great way to get some practice and get started and get points scoring. Uh, Every single year, half of the FTC teams on average do worse than the starter robot that uh, these teams release. And I will say that again, it's so important. Half of the teams at FTC do worse than the starter robot. In fact, at Worlds last year, I counted at least four starter robots that made it to the World Championship simply because they probably had decent autonomous periods or decent drivers to be able to pull these things up. So there's no shame in starting with a starter robot. Put your pride to the side. If you think that that's shameful, there's nothing wrong with starting at a beginner point. I think it's really important. So once you have a drivetrain set out, then you start thinking, okay, what's the next way I can score points? In this one, it might be, am I going to collect points, artifacts from the human player, or am I going to collect artifacts from the field? And then start making some sort of system be able to do that. A shooter is probably your first priority. If you can't get points in the goal, 
there's a huge amount of points you're leaving on the table here because that means you can realistically only get points for parking and only get points for pushing things onto that uh, depot and only get points for leaving inside of an autonomous. So it's not a ton of points if you can only do those. You're leaving a lot of points on the table if you can't get something into those goals. Once you've got a decent shooter mechanism set up, maybe you need to do an indexer. Maybe you need to do some sort of intake. I'm not sure how you want to go about sorting that out, but it's up to you to just say, okay, we need to do this, then we need to do this, then we need to do this. Based off of my original plan for that 12-week guideline, I highly suggest you start by building backwards. You say by week 12 or however many weeks you have until your first competition, you need to have a full week of driver practice. You need to give your programmers a few weeks to be able to go through these things and then start planning backwards. So planning backwards can be really helpful for defining what your priority list is. And then at the end, once you've designed your priority list, at the end of the first week, in your last couple days, maybe on the weekend, is where you should have a functioning robot by the end of this week. And this is some sort of robot in 24 hours, robot in 30 hours, robot in a day, whatever it is. In my opinion, it's a bit of a non-negotiable to not have a robot functioning. And that could even just be as simple as a starter robot from one of these uh, four suppliers. Yeah. It's a great place to start and it gives your programmers, it gives your new members, it even gives veteran members a place to get going and scoring points on the board. You should 100% have some sort of initial prototype by the end of the week. So to recap, what should you do this week? Step one, read the manual. Understand how you get scored. Step two, research. Look at the starter robots. Look at uh, previous games, you know, 2017 Rover Ruckus is a big one from FRC. Look at what other teams are doing. Once you've done that, spend several hours just coming up with a bunch of different ideas. Again, be visual, sketch them down. You know, taking a look at my notebook here, I've got, I've got probably 30 ideas in here. I need to have almost three times that before I'd even consider touching a robot. Don't skip that brainstorming phase, okay? Once you've done that, start making out a priority list. What are the most important things that you should be doing this week? You need, or not even this week, this season. Uh, and build it up. You need a drivetrain. You need a shooter. Once you have a shooter, is it going to just be grabbed from the, from the human player? Is it going to be an index? Or is it going to be the speed of which that shooter goes? Is it going to be that second lift mechanism? Is it going to be a smaller uh, drivetrain? Whatever it is that you choose, you need to start making a priority list of how are you going to tackle and approach this game. And again, always looking back to that shining light, what's the most important thing here? Scoring points, that's how you end up winning matches. And once you have gotten that brainstorm and you have a suggestion on how you might go about running this, by the end of the week, you should have a first functioning prototype for your robot. Uh, Regardless of how good it is, in fact, I'm a big fan of rapid prototyping. You should be using cardboard. You should be using pre-built parts. Very little 3D printing or CNC things or laser cutting anywhere at this point. Don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Just get stuff on a robot. Get something functioning. Uh, That's a great place to start. So I hope you found this week one helpful for you. Don't forget to join me next Sunday at 5 p.m. CST time uh, to be able to take a look at the strategy breakdown for week two of the Decode season. Let me know in the comments down below how your week is going and what kind of things your team is doing down on the week one. Again, I'm going to have the link to my 12-week plan here set up in the description down below. You should definitely take a look at this, make a copy of it, and then edit it to suit whatever your team's need is. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season, and I hope to see you out on the field.